cabinet, <laughs> uh, which is, of course, uh, one of the things that happens in politics. But uh, could we just get into the discussion right away? And may I ask, uh, um, Shailaja ma'am, what was it about Kerala that was able to fight both Nipah and COVID quite successfully, apart from the fact that the common factor was you? Yes, you want to explain that thing? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, we have a comparatively better uh, public health system here. And uh, as soon as we arranged a teamwork for uh, fighting against Nipah and COVID-19 pandemic, Nipah was the first time in Kerala. And uh, we didn't know at that time what is the uh, no medicine and no vaccination. We all know about that. Uh, but at once we acted, uh, we had to fight uh, against this uh, deadly virus and at once we set a protocol and a standard operating procedure to fight uh, Nipah. The one thing we implemented is to contain this virus in that short space. The, uh, we didn't allow people to move outside. Actually, when the cases were reported, the people were at once uh, started uh, leaving that place uh, in fear and we rushed there. Uh, I, uh, personally, I went there and uh, I appealed the people, don't move outside. We will provide everything to you, food, uh, medicine, anything you want. And that way we contained the virus in that place itself. And to, to cut short this spread and the isolation, uh, screening, etc. Uh, I think uh, we win in that battle, uh, we won in that battle. We have some experience on Nipah incident right. and uh, when, we, uh, when, I, uh, when I was the minister, when I heard about some potential viruses spreading in Wuhan, China, at once it clicked in my mind because ah. uh, there is a medical university in right. uh, Wuhan and uh, I remember that some students came to me previously uh, to have the registration and also for internship etc and at once i called my health secretary and discussed with him i think uh, uh, that i suspect that uh, someone will uh, come from uh, from this wuhan to kerala and they will take the virus to kerala he said it is correct it is the uh, the uh, period of some, some kind of celebrations and uh, people have, uh, will get uh, leave uh, at that time and definitely people, the students will rush to Kerala. And uh, uh, for that fear, we started our precautions. In anticipation, uh, we started training and uh, mock drill. And also we started the, uh, the control room, etc. And we trained uh, 18 expert groups. People laughed at us that uh, it will not come here. What are you doing? You are overacting. Uh, people uh, uh, suggested, uh, people commented like that. But we didn't uh, hear that thing. And uh, I'm sure that uh, it will come to Kerala. And because of that early preparation, we got the first cases. When the flight uh, came from Wuhan to Kerala, there in the airport, uh, there was our screening team. Uh, experienced uh, or uh, trained uh, team there and we got the three cases at once and we isolated them. Mm -hmm. And that way we proceed. But the people from other countries, when they started coming, uh, some cases uh, uh, we missed it. and they went to the society. Yeah. But at once we realized it, we rushed there and we uh, we traced their, uh, their, their contacts and we uh, acted like that. The sudden action, I think, and the team formation, the training, and the collection of, of the materials, uh, protective equipments, that thing saved us. That is the uh, method of uh, uh, activity, of the activities at that time. Right. Uh, Dr. Shetty, may I bring you in? Because since we've seen what's happened in Ukraine, uh, I've seen your old video going viral everywhere about, you know, you talking about the state of medical education and exactly what we need. Uh, and you've been a, a, a you know, very strong proponent of the fact that we do need more doctors, we do need more nurses. But I want to bring in the point that 
Shailaja ma'am has made about the public health system as a whole. It's not just doctors and nurses, it's also the rural health workers, it's also the leadership at the top. I mean, there's a whole system uh, that, uh, 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 you know, is created around uh, the doctors and the nurses. So talk about what exactly uh, have the lessons from COVID been and how do we make sure that going forward the medical education system is able to uh, sort of foresee something like this? The, first of all, we need a lot more doctors yeah. than what we have. I'll, 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 I'll tell you, ask you a question. Uh, the, my observation is that nobody knows how many doctors we have currently in India. Right. No one can say that we have 8, 8 lakh doctors or 12 lakh doctors. We don't have and any that, figure. Nobody has a figure. Right. On and off in the uh, various government discussions, the, the figures are projected. I have gone through those figures around 10 years ago. Ten years ago, there were doctors who were registered in 1935 in the registry. <laughs> okay, so nobody knows if you really want to plan how many doctors we need. Right. We need to know how many doctors are actually practicing, not how many doctors are registered. Hmm. No doctor, when they retire or they die, they they remove their number name from the registry. Right. Yeah, nobody cares. Right. So, essentially, we need to know the number. Hmm. But in our practical experience, you drive 20 kilometers away from city of Bangalore, hmm. you will find there are not that many doctors. Hmm. Forget about the private hospital. Even in government hospital, there aren't that many required number of doctors. That is the first thing. Second thing is, COVID has proven that the most important people in a critical situation are not the doctors. Yeah. It is the yeah. nurses. Nurses, exactly. Yeah. Nursing, there is an acute shortage of nurses across the country. You go through uh, our registry of uh, the, you go to any private hospital, ask them what is the attrition rate. It is nearly 40% to 50%. That is the kind of a turnover uh, we have because the girls get educated, they become nurses, they work in a hospital for one or two years, then they go to Middle East or go to overseas countries or do something. So essentially, there is a huge shortage of nurses. Now, why there is a shortage? Because the most influence, I am advising so many governments, but I cannot start a nursing college. Hmm. It is impossible for anyone to start a nursing college in this country. Why is that? Because no government gives the permission for you to start the nursing college. No. Yes. Okay. On one end, we are talking about shortage. On the other end, we do not allow new nursing colleges to come up. When you uh, uh, ask <coughs> the policymakers why uh, we are not able to start a nursing college, the answer is there are too many nursing colleges. Right. When you actually go to the data, that many nursing colleges are issued the license, but very few of them are working. Right? These nursing colleges were started in shopping malls and all over the place without any affiliation to the hospital. So obviously those nursing colleges are closed, <coughs> but new nursing colleges are not given the license. Hmm. Okay. So essentially, we are, uh, uh, we are talking about all the crisis situation and it is all about manpower. Hmm. And we are doing very little to address the issue. Right. Unless we have the data. If anyone talks about, oh, we have too many. What is too many? How many nurses are practicing in India? Nobody knows. The doctors were practicing privately, but uh, nurses were wandering to get a job. They were in the PSC list, but we cannot provide job for all of them. And uh, we have an online advertisement to register in that COVID brigade. And so many nurses, even doctors, registered in that COVID brigade. Doctors also are there uh, to in need of job in yeah. government center, and they are waiting. And uh, in our PSC list, there is a long list, and only few is getting uh, this job through PSC list. And we recruited them. 
and as the doctor said dr devishedi is a very experienced doctor ji uh, said about the actual number what is the number of actual uh, trained doctors or nurses in our country i don't know but uh, the 15th finance commission uh, now released the statement uh, as, as statistics about the uh, nurses and doctors uh, they are commenting that there is a chronic shortage of health professionals in india uh, we should have to add 10 lakhs doctors at once to get in par with the uh, with the world average uh, we should have to appoint they are saying the 15 finance commission is th- saying we should have to appoint 30000 <coughs> doctors per year uh, to achieve the a or the world average statistics and uh, we have uh, the world average uh, world norms is 1000 people for 1000 people there should be one doctor one doctor that and is one doctor but in india but in india the statistics shows that uh, it is 1511 hmm. but uh, i don't know whether the statistics is right or not the doctor ji correctly uh, uh, commented on that point that uh, whether they were working in the system uh, they were uh, okay, taking this uh, and numerics uh, from the registration uh, uh, data but after registering here they are going outside or yeah. they are go- uh, going anywhere and we cannot say that they are working for the population in india and the, the statistics may not be correct and uh, but uh, even in the statistics uh, we have in india we have only 1500 doctors uh, uh, people one doctor no uh, that is not sufficient right and who norm for nurses is uh, 1 is to 300 hmm. but in india the pop- the nurses uh, uh, patient ratio is 1 is to 670 that is in the actual period normal period but if a pandemic or uh, yeah. any infectious disease occur it become drastic and it become very difficult to tackle with this problem that is the condition in india and even in kerala kerala uh, comparatively a very good position is there in kerala uh, early i stated that we have very good public health system but the patient doctor ratio patient uh, nurse ratio that is not sufficient when i uh, was the minister uh, i started from 2016 when i examined uh, the, uh, the all the things were the Uh, in the 2016 when i examined it is 1961 uh, uh, according to the 1961 pattern uh, the patient doctor patient nurse ratio and i quarreled with the finance uh, minister or i compared uh, and uh, the chief minister was very helpful and finance minister also uh, they were very helpful and they created more than 7000 posts 7000 posts during this but that is not sufficient enough yet we are uh, suffering by this shortage right. and we should have to add more doctors and nurses to the system not only in public system but also private sector we should have get more health professionals that is the uh, need in the society right dr shetty you've been arguing that me- the medical education system has become elitist and it is uh, really the the people who have the fire in their bellies are not able to enter medical colleges it's just too expensive for them talk a little bit about this and really how going forward we need to make this part of the national agenda see the uh, i we cannot blame uh, the colleges hmm. because the regulations are such that yeah. today with less than 500 crore rupees you cannot build a medical college <laughs> nowhere in the world you need this kind of a money to set up a medical college to train just 100 doctors per year hmm. now if you have to if the regulation says that you need to have 20 acres of land you need to have a hospital which is built only for the sake of medical college supposing there is a very well run uh, existing hospital you cannot make it as part of the uh, a uh, medical college it has to be built for the purpose of medical college then you need to have a big uh, air condition auditorium you need to have a campus with all the hostels for all the doctors right. students everyone when there are so many low cost accommodation available just outside the campus nowhere in the world they have this kind of a regulation right so then 
you force them to spend 500 crore rupees then you try to reduce the uh, fees it is not fair <coughs> so we need to we look at uh, the entire concept of what a medical college is right so, so, uh, so when we yeah. uh, doctor when we talk when the uh, prime minister talks about a uh, medical college in every district uh, is it possible with the current uh, uh, regulatory system it is possible definitely okay. possible government can build it Hmm. Government can spend 500 crore rupees and then charge a very small fees because they're not looking at a return on investment. Hmm. Hmm. But a private sector and also the minimum cost for maintaining a medical college is uh, about 100 to 140 crore rupees per year. Hmm. Then if you have 100 students, they, you know, who has to pay that money? Right. So essentially, we have uh, created a, a huge monster and you have to constantly feed it. Right. But there is an option. What is the option? Yeah, I'll give you a simple example. Yeah. Now there are uh, at least 18,000 students stuck up in Ukraine. That's right. And they're all coming back. But they'll have now, to come very, back, take the yeah. exam, then they'll be, you know, eligible. No, they can't take the exam because they are students. Right, they haven't right. completed yeah. their course. They may be in the first year, second year, right. whatever. Now, those 18,000 kids won't be able to go back. Hmm. Because that country, rebuilding that country will take another three, four years at hmm. least. Okay. Now, you distribute uh, uh, 100 students to each medical college. Right. Give them extra students. Let them join first year, second year, third year. The campus we have in medical colleges for preclinical can easily manage 500, 600 students. Today, they have only 100, 150 students. Hmm. So they can easily manage preclinical. Hmm. For clinicals, you can't send the 100 students to the existing medical college hospitals because they are already crowded with the medical students. Some right. hospitals have more medical students than the patients. <laughs> right. You can't send them. So these medical colleges should affiliate with a district or a taluka government hospital, right. which is 250-300 bed hospital. And the facility there should be upgraded. Right. Like a right. medical college hospital. Right. And these students should be made to study in that clinicals, undergo clinical program in the those district hospital or a taluka hospital. But the, you cannot pull the teachers from the existing stream of medical college because then you are going to deprive some other college of the faculty. Hmm. Because the faculty requirement is very uh, strange and very, very rigid. Hmm. We need to allow the existing practicing senior doctors of that town to be the faculty members who right. teach the young students. Right. This is how I was <clears throat> trained in government Venlock Hospital. I was a I'm a product of Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, and Mangalore. All my teachers were successful doctors of Mangalore City, and they were our teachers. Today, any accomplished doctor of the town is not allowed to teach medical students. Hmm. To teach a medical student, you need to have joined the medical college as assistant professor, associate professor, then you become a professor, then only you can be teaching. So you have to change those uh, uh, regulations. Then these 100, the 18,000 students can be trained at a very, very affordable cost for the parents. And it can be done in a remarkably short period of time. Right. Uh, you know, we're, uh, as usual, <laughs> running out of time. Uh, Shailija, ma'am, uh, a piece of advice that you gave to your successor. What did you tell her uh, when she took over? Uh, what was the, what is the way forward for Kerala's medical health system? Yes, uh, I, I have some experiences uh, on this. Uh, as Dr. Lee said that we should have to change the regulations and also the policy hmm. uh, we i mentioned about the central government hmm. uh, because uh, the policy should be changed i think uh, you know that um, central government is spending only one percent of the gdp in the health sector right and we can say 1.4 uh, percent including the state government's expenditure hmm. and if we isolate it and the central government's expenditure on uh, health sector is only one percent of the gdp what can we do Right. We cannot do anything. We cannot improve the infrastructure. We cannot appoint more human resource or uh, 
anything, equipment, etc. Uh, the old, the every day it is changing. New interventions are coming here. New equipments are coming in health sector. And we should have to add everything to the health system. But we cannot. But in Kerala, uh, luckily we started uh, one thing, that is the Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Board. And we got some loans for capital expenditure for the infrastructure development and also for the equipments. It cannot be used for revenue expenditure. We cannot appoint more doctors on these funds. Right. But uh, we started improving. The last five years was uh, a fantastic change in Kerala. Uh, 20 crores to uh, 70, 760 crores and 1,000 crores for the medical colleges. Uh, I mean 20 crores for the Taluka hospitals and 100 crores for the district hospitals and we are uh, Invest, we invested, uh, the work started for the Trivandrum Medical College got 760 crores for the infrastructure development. The thing is that we should have uh, built, uh, made a master plan to uh, have a master plan. What should be added in the medical colleges and what in district hospitals. I found that in some district hospitals, uh, they have uh, five or six acres or two or three acres. There are uh, buildings, uh, small, small buildings in each and every place and the navigation, it is too difficult. And it is not a hospital, but small buildings here and there. We should have to uh, change all these things. I am not uh, explain these things. It is too difficult to uh, uh, to the function of a hospital out of this. And also central government is saying that each district you can start a medical hospital. Yes. Only 25 acres, you know. The Trivandrum Medical College and Kote Medical College, they have more than 300 acres when they started the medical college. Now we are uh, in scarcity of space there. We cannot build, uh, we have we do have, have to have dental college and uh, quarters and other things, very good clinical practice if we want. There should be very good specialty block, etc. But in 25 acres, how can we start a medical college? I don't know. And also, um, we are attaching our district hospitals to get one medical college uh, for clinical practices. But poor condition is here. Comparatively, it is better in Kerala, but uh, uh, the district hospitals, they have no uh, modular theatres or uh, proper uh, super speciality blocks, etc. And we, uh, how can we call it a medical college? What, what will be the fate of the students who uh, come out of uh, such a system? And Dr. G said that we should have to include the uh, students who are coming back, it is too difficult in practice. That, a very good idea he made in front of That's very good idea, support that. But uh, in practice, where we can include the students? Now also in all the medical colleges are in scarcity of space and also uh, human resources, etc. They cannot all of a sudden uh, increase the strength, student strength. There. That is the problem. And the central government should change their mind and if, if I think at least 10% of GDP should be invested in public health system. Uh, investing in public health system means not only improving the health of the individuals, but improving the economic status of the country in future. Right. They are not thinking. We are not thinking so. We are not thinking. Even after the independence, we never thought about this thing. Increasing yeah. the <coughs> investment yeah. to more than Thank 100. you. Thank you. Dr. Shetty, last word. Uh, wonderful idea, but difficult in practice. Uh, what's your response to that? See, the, no, I, I agree it's not easy, yeah. but it can be done because we have to look at a new location for the medical college, hmm. critical work. It has to be a new hospital. They cannot be, and there are many government hospitals in every state. And a private medical college can easily uh, uh, convert a existing government hospital hmm. as a medical college hospital right. and use it for teaching purpose. I was trained in such medical college hospital. It wasn't owned by the Kasurba Medical College. It is a government hospital, but right. it is a wonderful place to train young doctors. So I do hope all this is possible. Thank you very much for joining us from your respective cities. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.